this is now our chemical process. So this is what we're going to be working on through all this course. And it's very important, or at least very recommended that you get to know the process. And if you can either print it, write it down, or more conveniently, open it in a mobile device, maybe in an iPad, maybe your phone, or maybe even another computer. So you can be working on the simulation at the same time as you have this process as a reference. Let me explain you a little bit on this. As you can see here, we have this pre feed and we got this air. So technically these are the only raw materials that we're going to be working with. Then we have several type of unit operations. This is a heater, this is a flash drum, which is technically a separation unit. This is a combustion chamber, which technically is a chemical reactor in Aspen. This is a valve. This is a distillation. We're going to be using RADFRAC first. RADFRAC is one of the most rigorous models for distillation columns. So we're going to feed a lot of data to this unit operation. Then we have this distillation column, which in real life, they will be similar. But when we model them, these will be distilled which of course is different from RADFRAC. The main advantage with this tool is that we don't need that much of data input, meaning that this is not that rigorous. But in real life, you will be still working with a condenser, a reboiler, a column with several plates and trays and so on. We got a compressor and a pump right here, which are pressure changers. So technically we have pressure changers, one, two, and three. We have three separation units we have one reaction unit and we've got one heat exchange unit as products we have several type of products we got these ones and it's very important for you guys to understand that actually even though i might consider this a stack gas it doesn't mean that this is a stack gas this is the name i decided to label this but maybe for instance lpg that will be liquefied petroleum gas Further in the problem, you're going to see that this is mostly propane. So yeah, you can either name it LPG or more properly propane. C6 will be the mixture of benzene and cycloxane. And C7 will be toluene. So once again, guys, this is our process. We have several type of conditions for either streams and unit operations. Many times, or most of the times, you got to ensure the feed as independent variables, then this right here, this right here, this stream right here, all these streams are actually dependent on the unit operations input that will be, depending on what we choose, they will be changing. For instance, this example, C6 will depend on condenser properties of this unit operation. This stream will decrease in pressure according to our input in this valve. So we don't need to fill anything on this. Actually, I would recommend you not to fill anything so Aspen Plus can be modifying the input uh, variables. What we really need to do is to change the unit operation conditions. So that's there are two main ways to do this. Either uh, you select the temperature of this value and this value. What Aspen will do is calculate the heat requirements or the most straightforward will be to literally set up the temperature of the heater and Aspen will calculate this part right here, which I think is much more, uh, let's say, common sense. What you want to do is to set up your unit operation and see the results rather than to guess the results and verify the unit operation input. But doesn't mean that we are not going to do that eventually. Actually, sometimes what we want to do is that how we can fix this stream in order to modify the unit operation. As stated before, we have heat exchange, reaction kinetics, momentum, separation processes, technically the four main processes that are involved in unit operations. So let's check out the problem statement.